Hey everyone, welcome back to this week's episode of Gone Soul. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, uh, in this week's episode, I found a blog post about the JVN. And so effectively what Serge has done is he's uh, taken some, like a minor subset of the JVM specification and implemented it in the Go language. Um, I was kind of hoping that it would have like garbage collection related stuff. And really the only reason I'm interested in it is because I read a lot of, a lot of Java for work. I don't particularly like the Java language, but uh, I'm kind of a pragmatic person where I'm like, if this is what I'm going to be using at my job, then I might as well learn as much as I can about it. And so I thought, oh, JVN, perfect. I'll go do this deep dive on the JVN. But uh, I was, like I said, expecting garbage collection related stuff, right? Because that's kind of what the JVM was known for originally, was uh, was like one of the first uh, compilers, VMs, whatever you want to call it, with uh, garbage collection that got mainstream adoption. And so that's what I was kind of expecting to see was like a toy example of, of garbage collection. Uh, nonetheless, though, I mean... You don't see me uh, going and implementing any subsets of the JVM spec in another language. So uh, I'm totally uh, happy that Serge did this. It's, it was super interesting, super fun to go through. Um, so without further ado, let's just dive right in. So this is the blog post we'll be going through today. Um, it's uh, written by Serge, so I'll definitely uh, link to his blog as well as the blog post in the description below. Um, basically, it's writing a JVM, as I said before. Uh, you could see I highlighted whether we like it or not because uh, personally I can't stand Java, um, but I use it every day for work and that was part of the reason why I was like, well, let me uh, look into this. So um, what we're doing now uh, is we're creating a basic add class uh, and we'll be looking at the bytecode from that and effectively uh, parsing the bytecode and actually like enacting the methods based on like parameters passed in and things like this. Uh, so right here I'm just basically you know writing the the Java code that will end up compiling and then um, actually parsing later. So what we're doing here is we're just compiling that and right here we'll actually look at the hex dump of the output from the Java compilation and compare it with what Surge has in the blog post. Um, these are the bytes we're actually going to be parsing out throughout the blog post um, in order to like test that our, our toy JVM is actually doing what we expect. So like another or I guess a more useful thing to do rather than looking at the hex is to do Java P right and in this case we're seeing what the opcodes that uh, the JVM is actually uh, going to enact in order to to do the add, right? You can see that I load zero, I load one, which is just add, loading the two variables, and then uh, add, actually adding them and returning the value. Oh, so here's another kind of interesting thing uh, about the JVM, which I didn't realize until reading this. So when I was in college, I took a compiler's class and we did C-based. And I believe, someone could correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the C compiler is actually has registers. So I thought it was interesting that he points out that the JVM doesn't have any registers at all. It's all stack based. So that was pretty interesting. I wanted to point that out. Um, right here what I'm doing is I'm opening up the JVM specification. Uh, because basically what he's done is he's gone through the JVM specification and implemented like the most basic stuff in Go. Um, which <laughs> one thing I didn't realize is this tutorial was in Go. Uh, so. I'll show you like later. I had to go install Go and like I don't know. I I wrote a little bit of Go back when I was in college, but other than that, I haven't written any Go. Uh, but anyway, this is the JVM specification, and uh, if anybody wants me to go through that in like future videos, I'd be more than happy to do like tutorials on that as well. Um, as I said before, one thing I kind of uh, wasn't expecting here is I, I I was expecting him to talk about like garbage collection and things like that, but. Uh, he didn't, like, none of the tutorials covers that. So I, I think, I mean, for me, that would be the most useful thing because that's, like, the black magic to me of the JVM is all the garbage collection. Uh, like I said, I wrote compiler in C originally, so I had to do all the memory, man or you forced the, the user to do all the memory management yourself. Or, sorry, them this, themselves. Uh, so 
yeah, I mean, that's what I would like to go over is like the garbage collection stuff. So I, if anyone knows of any resources that are out there that already have the garbage collection stuff, like let me know because I'd like to know about that and I'll do a future video. If not and there is interest in it, then, you know, I'll go and do a garbage collection video myself. It'll be similar to like what he's doing here with the JVM where he like does a very basic toy example. I would do the same thing with uh, garbage collection. Uh, anyway, so there's a the specification. So uh, this is when I finally returned from looking at the JVN spe specification, I'm realizing, or at this point I'm like, what language is this in? Like I thought it was still a JVN language. I thought maybe it was Groovy or something. Um, then I get looking, I'm like, oh, this is Go. <laughs> and I don't, like I set up a new user to do these videos. Um, and so it has like almost nothing on it. As you saw in the previous console episode where I had to like install Docker and, you know, uh, set up Ubuntu on the Docker and all that other stuff. Uh, in this case, I didn't have Go at all, right? So I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go install Go just to follow this basic JVM tutorial, which I ended up doing. But uh, anyway, at, the, at this point, what he's doing is he's, he's just showing you how to parse the, the the JVM. And so we're right here. We're like basically parsing the opcode. This is how I found out it was Go, by the way. I was, I was like, I just picked a method and was like, what is this? And I'm like, oh, Go. Um, so he's, he's basically just showing you how to parse like the beginning, the headers of that that uh, hex dump basically that we've got here. So he's got the cafe, babe thing, the major and the minor version and all that other stuff. And here's me realizing I don't have Go on this user. Here's me realizing the brew update is not working on this user. Here's me finally being able to install Go. And finally a hello world in Go. So uh, basically I just you know copy pasted his code and uh, what I'm trying to do at this point is I'm trying to run it, right? And usually what I do when I'm following tutorials is I'll just take the code, then I'll read through it, make sure I understand like what's going on, and then I'll print things out as I'm going. Um, and one thing I'd forgotten about Go is it has a stupid compiler thing where if you're not using a variable, it won't let you compile the code. Um, that annoyed me back in college, and then I, like, I was reading on Stack Overflow and I saw a bunch of people going like, they still haven't fixed this and it's 2020, and I was like, amen to that, dude, it's totally annoying. So anyway, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to print out the cafe babe, the major minor, that's been parsed from the add.class file, but it wasn't working. Uh, so that super annoyed me. Um, another thing is like he's got the, the entirety of the code on a gist, for this tutorial and I'll link to that in the description as well so you can follow along from like or you can it's also helpful to like see the the end goal of like where are you trying to head with all this right while you're coding it up so I did that uh, like I said here's when I'm like what do you mean it's not used and then I'm realizing oh yeah I remember this stupid thing about go as well uh, I know I'm gonna get a bunch of hate mail from <laughs> go developers because it's it's like a safety thing, right? Like I understand why they would do it, but also I feel like there, there's, that's a bit too opinionated in my opinion. Uh, anyway, so finally, after a bunch of stack overflowing, uh, I was able to print out the the bytes that we're reading right here, right? And you might panic a little bit because it's not saying cafe babe, <laughs> it's not matching the hex dump exactly right. But uh, what I did is I converted them to integers, so that I was able to print them out. And uh, what I do, I th it might be right here later in the video, but I'll, I basically just convert those integers back to hex using like a, a website that does that and just confirm like, okay, these bytes do match what we're seeing in the hex dump as well. And you may notice something different at this point in the episode. I've switched to Sublime. <laughs> I originally was, you know, coding a bunch in VAM and then I was like, well, that's going to be confusing for people. I think sometimes it Vim tends to confuse people. So there's a lot of hotkeys going on, a lot of lines getting duplicated and deleted. Um, and I, I, after I realized I was going to be coding, you know, a lot more in this video, I was like, okay, well, let me switch to Sublime. Okay, so we've done like the very basic parsing at this point in the tutorial. Um, at this point, we're kind of like kicking it up a notch, right? We're going to actually parse. Like, those things that we parsed up to this point are kind of, like, unimportant. They're not that useful. Uh, these, this data that we're going to be parsing out of the class file is a lot more useful, right? It's, it's a bunch of the constant 
uh, data related to the class. And uh, so similarly, right, I just copy it, took his struct and then copied this method down as well. And you can kind of see what's going on here is we're just iterating through the constant pool and based on the tag uh, for that particular constant, that will tell us what, what ki kind of constant it is. Uh, again, if you go look at the JVM specification file, you'll see like these hex values correlate to like what type of constant, as well as like the JVM spec also tells you like what uh, each constant is basically, what each type of constant is and does as well. Uh, so that's all we're doing at this point is we're like continuing through this hex file um, and parsing the, the values and then creating the constant pool out of that. So here he's providing a bunch of other methods that are like very similar to that uh, class pool info method that, that we lifted before. Uh, these are for like a bunch of other things like fields, the attributes, the methods, things like that, and uh, handles like parsing the names out of those and things like that, which we'll use below later. I'll, I'll, I'll effectively print out the method names and things like that using these methods that he's providing us. So just below all those methods, this is when things started to come together for me, right? It, he creates this, this class struct, and now you're like, oh, okay, this is what a class is in JVM, right? After you, after the other things are kind of, you're kind of like lost in the weeds because you're like, oh, what is this attribute thing? What are these fields? And then once you get to this point in the tutorial, you're like, oh, okay, this is a class. And then right below that, he, he parses the class itself. Um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll basically just start printing these values out uh, to see like what, what it actually is an attribute, what actually is a method, you know, those sorts of things, right? And right here is when I'm finally able to print uh, something reasonable out. So you can see I'm at least getting the name uh, from where this, this uh, attribute came from. So at this point, I'm just like getting my bearings, right? I've printed these things out and I'm just like going back to that hex dump of the class file and figuring out like where are these things in relation to one another, these things that I'm, I parsed and printed out at this point. So I took that source file string that we got printed out finally and was like, where is this in the hex dump, right? And I was able to find it and I was like, okay, cool. Now I'm kind of have an understanding of like where I am in this class file basically. So right here is when things start to get fun. Um, we've parsed the class out, right? And we parsed out the method and everything like that. And now we're actually going to start creating frames, which allow us to eventually actually pass methods to, or pass arguments to the methods and actually do some computation using that, that parsed class file. Um, he's, at this point, he's just you know, explaining kind of like what a frame is and um, what we're about to parse out and what we're going to store in these frames and things like that. And so here's the, the exec method, which is, I, they, they, they need to be kind of hand in hand, right? Uh, when you're just looking at the frame, you're not quite sure, like, what's going on with this exactly. But then when you look at the exec method, you're like, oh, perfect, okay. Uh, once you look at the exact method, you understand like why the frame needs to be constructed and like how you're going to interact with the frame and all these other things, right? This is the actual add method, like if you think about it. Uh, obviously it's generic, right? It it's, could be used for anything, not just add, um, but for our particular case, right? That, that exact method is going to do the adding for us. Um, and then you look below and you're like, this is how we're actually going to use it. So this is where he starts explaining, like, uh, by the way, we're not going to talk about, you know, new or the JVM, or sorry, or garbage collection or you know, anything like that. And this is when I was like, oh, that kind of, it's kind of frustrating, I guess. Um, but uh, one thing he does point out, like, he has a Git repo that's got a lot more of the uh, functionality uh, built out of his, like, Go JVM. So I I'm... I might star his repo and just like keep my eyes on it and see if he ever does do any sort of garbage collection stuff because like I said, I keep saying is like that's what's interesting to me about the JVM more than anything else. And now for the moment of truth. It works. 2 plus 3 is 5. That's everything for this week's episode of Console. Um, it was fun, right? 
I'm glad that Search put this post together. I know I certainly wouldn't have time to implement the JVM spec in the Go language. <laughs> um, that said, I kind of wish I had more garbage collection related stuff. So uh, if anyone has any sort of garbage collection tutorial similar to this one, like I'm sure there's plenty of information out there that I could go find to read more about the garbage collection. But what I liked about this particular tutorial is it was very basic, right? We just did one class. It was a very easy thing to follow. Uh, so if anyone has anything like that related to garbage collection, I'd love to review that next. Okay, see you next week.